Hi there, welcome back. In today's video, we're still continuing with the dried flowers and these beautiful colours. And I thought this time, rather than stick with the neutral and natural shades, we'll go with some bit of, bit of pop of colour. We're using this lovely wooden tray, uh, that will board serving food board and so on it's from in the uk it's from asda i think the U, uh, the us equivalent is walmart but the idea or my idea was that we try and create a wildflower meadow using these lovely dried pressed flowers and also some of the grasses so it was just a case of thinking about how i was going to do this here we are look we're going to use these beautiful natural colored ones as well Jungle's my favourite. Probably not going to use those red, although I did keep them in reserve. These were all the ones that I had. So we've opted to go for this sort of style, this design. And this was me. I just laid them out ready just to see what it might look like. And then popped a few of these lovely dried pressed flowers on as well. Uh, just, to see, just to give an idea of what sort of composition I wanted on the tray. Now... Editing Laura knows that some of this didn't quite go to plan, which isn't really that much of a shock when it comes to our projects. But the overall result in the end, I hope you'll agree with me, was stunning and it did exactly what we wanted it to do. So, yeah, just trying to plan out how many do I put on? How, do I want to use? I mean, I would love to have used all of them. I did use quite a lot actually. Um, but I didn't use quite all, didn't quite use all of the ones that came in the pack. But again, if you don't want to use dried pressed flowers, you could use your PET stickers. You could use transfers. Um, you could do something similar, maybe with uh, decoupage some napkins on, maybe perhaps instead. It's, you know, totally up to you. This is just us showing an idea of what I wanted to do. So this is a time lapse of me applying the dried uh, pressed grasses. Um, trying to keep the idea that it reminds me of corn and, and wild flowers and meadows and grasses and me with a whole whimsical romantic idea um, that this is what it was going to do. So what you can see me using there is a UV torch and some UV resin. Now this wasn't going anywhere near my hand so I always felt happy not wearing the gloves but by all means if you want to wear gloves and a respirator mask then do. Make sure you protect yourself at all times when you use resin. Work in a well ventilated area as well if you can. So there we go. So this is me just finishing this off now. This took quite a long time to do, but it was well worth it. I mean that, if you didn't want to put these flowers in, that would look great on its own. But I fell in love with this blue. I think that's a corn flower, but I'm not 100% certain on that. So forgive me if that's wrong. So it's just a case of deciding now, where am I going to put these? And I'm just using the UV resin a little bit like glue. Um, oh, I dropped it. <laughs> um... Yeah, so just using it, and there we go, and then using a little coffee stir stick just to press it down slightly. Again, I'm using my nail there. I'm not touching it with my skin. I should really have worn gloves. And then we're just going to hit it with a bit of the UV light, so just a bit of a warning there. We've got the light coming up. Now, you can, of course, do them all in one go, and then if you've got a UV lamp, put them under the UV lamp. It's totally up to you or you can do them individually. I did start off doing them individually, one at a time, but it was taking so much time that I thought in the end, do you know what, I'm just going to put all of these on and then I'm going to cure it under the much larger UV lamp that we have. There we go. Look at the beautiful red. Some sort of a daisy. I mean, I don't know if any of these, I should imagine some of them are dried. Uh, dyed even sorry of course they're all dried uh some of them are dyed have any has anybody who's watching this have they had any success with drying their own flowers doing the process themselves using the i think it's silica gel capsules isn't it that you're supposed to use um let, let, let us know in the comments let us know if you can recommend a brand of uh the drying material that you need to use to dry out your pressed flowers um or and non-pressed flowers yeah, just let us know what what sort of have you had any luck what do you find best is there a particular um process that you follow 
because I'm desperate to have a go at drying some flowers myself just to see what it would look like because the ultimate thing for me would be to make one of those beautiful tabletops all with flowers in it would be absolutely stunning but there we go so we've got the red we've got a lovely blue flower red daisy and we've got the little yellow daisy up in the top right hand corner there of the tray so just trying to apply a little bit more of the UV resin whilst holding the torch, a little handheld torch I've got over it. Now, as I said, didn't film the rest of me putting the flowers in, but this is what they look like. Now, yes, I have gone for a lot, <laughs> ever such a lot, um, but I love it. I love the pop of colour that it gives. If you've got neutrals in your home, whether it's your lounge, your dining room, family room, kitchen, conservatory, wherever, or bedroom, study, office, all those sorts of places. If you then had something like this, then it would give that lovely little pop of colour. Now, I need to explain the tin cans. The flowers, although they're dried and pressed, weren't weren't pressed enough so I pressed them overnight and applied some weight a little bit of a um, silicon mat over the top of them and then just applied some weight some even distribution of weight on them so as you can see there from the bottom right hand corner some of them still haven't pressed flat to the surface now we were always going always going to cover this with a top coat of regular resin always of clear resin needed to do that to seal them in Otherwise, you know, they'd eventually come off and it would get ruined. But before doing that, yes, I'm going to put something else on it. <laughs> because, you know, you can never have too much of a good thing. Well, maybe not. I'm going to put these beautiful little miniature butterflies in. There we are. My only regret is that I didn't have any little miniature wasps or big... Well, not wasps, actually. Bees honeybees that would have been lovely to put them in or ladybirds that sort of thing so as you can see one in the top right hand side there there's a lovely one there and then there's another one just trying to place it um there we go with a pair of tweezers that have got gold paint all over the bottom honestly i need to clean those um so yeah haven't applied any resin down first with these um just going to apply the top coat over them very very carefully oh there we go gorgeous blues there so here's a bit more of a close-up can you see those there's little miniature butterflies and all these beautiful dried pressed flowers this is stunning absolutely stunning not as flat as i'd like them to be but hopefully fixed with a bit of a top coat so there we are so now wayne this is wayne wayne has uh mixed up some tea expert resin it's one to one mixing ratio it's crystal clear he put it three times through the resiners um debubbling machine let's call it that's probably not the correct name for it forgive me um and what he's doing is just put a tiny bit of resin onto the end of that stir stick and he's putting it over those little miniature butterflies just as like a little pool, their own little pool of, of re individual pool of resin over the top of them before then applying the resin to the rest of this beautiful wooden tray. Now, as I said, you don't have to use this as a tray. You could use it just as display, a display piece instead. Uh, you can use it as a tray. You know, the resin is heat proof and uh, chill proof so you can put hot and cold uh, cups and glasses and things on it you know we've, we've got hot and cold drinks in um, there we go so it's just applying the rest of the resin over the top now what we didn't show you is he applied all of this resin he let it cure and then he realized he's going to have to apply another very very thin coat of resin to it because some of those um, little seed head flowers and things didn't quite get covered enough so he went back a few hours later after this, had a look at it, thought, mm, need to apply a tiddly bit more resin. That was my finger there just saying, you've missed a bit. <laughs> you've missed a bit. Oh, and with the pen as well. And with the pen again. Uh, yeah. Apologies, Wayne. I know it irritates you sometimes, but, you know, you know, two pairs of eyes, better than one. <laughs> 
bless he's ever so patient um, so yeah just pouring the rest of it out and then realizing yeah that some of it is still not quite covered enough there we go so he's just trying to he's just using the end of that spatula just trying to push some of the things a little bit further down this did solve quite a lot of that issue however he did we have got no footage of it but he did go back a few hours later and just apply another very very small amount of resin over the top of it and that cured all of it all by one tiny little piece but we know it's there we can see it we know it's there but to anybody else they probably wouldn't notice it but you know what it's like with your own work you can be a bit of a perfectionist but as we've said before handmade would love uh, and perf and our own unique style and perfection but not mass produced if you want something that's mass produced and there's no nothing at all wrong with it that's fine as well but you need to obviously not <laughs> Um, you need to go to, uh, you know, the bigger high street retail places. Um, but, you know, why not support your local small business and uh, purchase from them instead? You're going to get something unique. You're going to get something that's handmade with love. You know exactly where it's come from. And uh, whoever's produced it, manufactured, designed it can usually give you a lot of information around it and what their their plan was, how they came up with the idea. Obviously, as much information or as little information as you want um, along with these videos, you know. Um, if you don't want to listen to me talking to you like I am now, then, you know, you can always mute the, press the mute button. <laughs> but I hope you don't. <laughs> So there we go, Wayne's just uh, finishing off, just pressing a few things down. And here we go with the final top coat and this is the finished piece. I think this is gorgeous with a capital G, beautiful and stunning. Stunning. It definitely is wildflower meadow uh, in the summer months. Something to look forward to, some warmer weather, particularly here in the UK. Thanks everyone for liking, sharing, subscribing and watching. Hit the thumbs up button and take care. Bye.